And we are going to launch right into our program. I'm going to announce and please welcome our interim city manager, Teresa Galvan. Thank you, Amber. Hello and welcome to our Lompoc State of the City presentation for 2018. Thank you all for being here. 2017 was a busy and eventful year for our city, full of programs like launching our financial management system and preparing for the go live of our new city website. 2017 was also a time of transition for the city of Lompoc. As we said goodbye to our city manager, Patrick Weimiller, and we also said goodbye to several senior staff members wishing them very happy retirements. And we also welcomed a few new faces to the city team. It is my honor to serve you as interim city manager while our city council recruits for this position. This past year, we've worked through budget challenges, which we continue to tackle as we experience increasing costs of service outpacing revenues like so many cities across the state. In the face of such challenges, we are fortunate to have inspiration and leadership in our community. This leadership comes from so many different people and community organizations, service clubs, faith-based organizations, local nonprofits, sports organizations, business associations. You all help make Lompoc the special place that it is. One of my favorite stories from this past year is Lompoc's very own brothers, Boss and, Bro, Boss and Bo Brockett. Just six and five years old, they started their own campaign to raise money to replace the swings at the local playground in Pioneer Park. Their campaign, Pennies for Pioneer Park, took off and they have raised more than $1,600 to date. <laughs> it's my honor to share with you that Boss and Bo are here with us today, along with their grandmother, Leslie, and their father, Brenton, and they have an additional $850 check to add to the coffers for the playground. Please stand up, boys. Good, I'm glad they're coming up. These guys are really leaders in our community, so thank you for coming up and presenting this check to add to this. <laughs> thank you, great job. <laughs> All right, let me, don't forget that I put this check right here. <laughs> let me say it again, thank you. We are so grateful for you and your community spirit. You make Lompoc proud. City leadership starts with our city council, and I'm pleased to say that our five elected officials are here with us in support today. Thank you. To talk about our city council's priorities and major agenda items, I'd like to invite Mayor Lingle up now. You know, the age has it. Can't do anything over the glasses anymore, so. Thank you, Teresa. I also want to appreciate, I appreciate everyone for being here today. It's great that you come to learn a little bit about your city and how it operates. And Bo and Boss. Boss. I remember the city council meeting when you came. Thank you again. If we have all citizens like the two of you We'll continue to have just an absolutely wonderful city. So as mayor of the city council and the rest of the city council, we act as, for lack of a better term, the board of directors of a major corporation. We set policies and then take those policies and turn them over to the city manager and her staff, her or his staff, to implement these policies. In addition to acting as a governing body of the city, Members of the City Council have other responsibilities outside of the City Council. We don't just sit up on the dais for one night every two weeks. For an example, 
I, I serve as the chair of Northern California Power Agency, NCPA. NCPA is a uh, joint action committee uh, that um, consists of local authorities in 16 different cities. What we do is we, together we uh, average uh, about 600,000 customers that we serve with clean, reliable energy. The investments we make through NCPA for the 16 different communities, all the way from up in Ukiah, we're the furthest down here south, is the Lompoc. The 600,000 community members that we provide power to, again, it is clean, reliable energy. As you may or may not know, the state of California requires all cities by the year 2020 to be 20% uh, carbon free energy. They're going to be going to very shortly 50% carbon free and eventually they want to be 100% carbon free. It is through our joint efforts of Northern California Power Agency we are able to provide the city of Lompoc this clean and reliable energy. So I'm a member of uh, NCPA, but every one of our council members, they also are members of different agency. Council member Mosby, he sits on the Santa Barbara County a uh, Agency of Governing Bodies, SBK, which is a regional planning uh, agency comprised of the County of Santa Barbara and all of the eight incorporated cities. SBK distributes local, state, and federal transportation funds and acts as a forum for addressing regional and multi-jurisdictional issues. Councilmember Osborne, she sits on the Home for Good initiative, which is a, a agency that helps with our homeless in our communities, communities, Santa Barbara County. Uh, Councilmember Starbuck is a liaison to the um, Chamber of Commerce. Councilman Vega is an alternate to the Solid Waste Group. All of these are in addition to our regular city council meetings, meetings that we attend. And there are other committee, committee appointments that we have. We rotate around. We also are liaisons to the Public Safety Commission, Human Services Commission, Parks and Recreation Commission, and the Planning Commission. And there's a few other ones. That's just to mention a few. So it's throughout the city, the county, and also the state that we are, are actually representatives. The council has recently been handling some pretty major issues. As Teresa mentioned, uh, we're currently recruiting for our city manager, our new city manager. And hopefully, hopefully we'll have an announcement soon. As a matter of fact, this evening, we have a special council meeting that we will be discussing that issue with the uh, consultant that we hired to help us do that hiring. So hopefully in the near future, we'll be able to make a nice announcement about the um, new city manager, him or her, whichever one we happen to choose. And there are other priorities that we address, overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of our municipal government. The city manager does that, and the council hires and evaluates the city manager. So again, I want to emphasize that the city council sets priorities. The city manager is the person that handles the day-to-day -day operations, his and her staff. So it's, if you ever see a city worker out there, oh, and by the way, I just have to mention, we forgot to introduce someone, Police Chief Pat Walsh. You carry a gun, I'm going to introduce you. It is important that we stay involved in the community process, filling this very important role of the city manager. As I mentioned, the city is currently in the, uh, in, uh, recruiting the process. Hopefully, real soon, we'll have that announcement to make. The process, the process here in Lompoc of electing city council members has changed. I think most of you in this room stay pretty well informed, but it's important that you let the entire community know that starting this November, the process of hiring council members is going to be different. 
We're gonna, we're gonna put a map up here in a few seconds. There we go. Um, so if you look at that map, there's four different districts. Each district will be voting on a council member. In the past, the citywide, you'd elect two council members no matter where you lived. Starting November, depending on where you live in area or uh, district one, two, three, or four, you'll be voting for a council member that, to represent your district. Now realize when I say represent your district, that doesn't mean they only represent your district. All five of us on the city council still represent the city and we'll be representing the entire city, all five of us, but it'll only be elected by one of the districts. This year it is district, I believe, two and three. Yeah, districts two and three, if you look at the map, those will be up for election in November, this November, and then in 2020, we'll be electing the council members for district one and four. The mayor still remains an at-large citywide position that you'll be able to, in place in the city, you'll vote for a person for mayor. But please try to spread the word about the district elections. I don't know if this map is on our website yet, but uh, Ms. Gallivan, if I can make sure that that does appear on our website. There you go. Um, and we may want to have a little workshop here and there to get people informed as to how these district elections work. As you, as you are aware, and as uh, Ms. Gallivan mentioned, we've been having some troubles, you know, struggling with our, with our budget. But it's not only us, it's almost every city in the state of California. So we'll be very soon starting on our next, um, the next budget, the 2019-2021 the budget. But we are also working on right now a mid-year adjustment. We, had, we, saw, we uh, balanced our budget in uh, September of last year, but we're rapidly finding out that we're probably gonna have to make some adjustments, which will call for probably some additional cuts in the expenses, because we want to finish this budget cycle, the 2017-2019 cycle, at, on a balanced budget. And several of the council members have already mentioned that they want to be more involved in preparation for our next budget. And it's important that you, the community, stay involved too. We, we're gonna have workshops, make sure that you attend these workshops as well. As well as attending the workshops for that, let us know. We recently, getting back to the city manager's position, we put out a public poll. Hopefully you had an opportunity to go to that poll and let us know what you're looking for in a city manager. I've, we just recently, I've, I've seen the results of this poll. There's literally hundreds of you that did participate and we appreciate that. Your petition, petition is, participation is important for everything that we do. Obviously, we don't have all the answers, but collectively as a community, we will. So stay engaged. Let us know what your feelings are, no matter what it is. Our websites are on the, or our uh, email addresses are on the web, city website. Uh, many of us, we have published our phone numbers, but contact us, let us know what's happening. So this year has been challenged with the budget, some other challenges, but we're gonna be able to survive. And I bring back now Teresa Gallivan to let us know some more good things about this city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. And now on to some highlights from our city departments. City administration has been busy implementing the policies of council, and none more so than the budget and the adoption of the commercial cannabis use ordinance, which we'll discuss a little bit more later in this presentation. As the mayor mentioned, the city has approved the 17, the council approved the 2017-19 biennial budget this past fall, and it was a challenging process. The council wrestled with the options to balance the budget through increasing revenues via new tax initiatives, 
or reducing expenses. Ultimately, council chose to do reductions in expenditures to balance the budget. In 2017, staff also worked on a draft 15-year capital improvement plan, a document that had not been updated in 15 years. In the future, the council will have the opportunity to consider the draft plan along with updating development impact fees. These items help council make informed decisions when planning for Lompoc's future. As the mayor mentioned, we're working on a, on a budget adjustment, reducing operational expenditures and revenues, and soon we'll be preparing for the next budget cycle and how to scale operations to better match revenues. Our city council has made a priority of growing the economy through housing and jobs growth and balance. Several projects are underway and will be discussed under economic and community development. While it may not be enough to balance our budget alone, I am pleased to share that our general fund revenue sources have been steadily growing. In this slide, we see that transient occupancy tax, more commonly known as the hotel tax, which is the purple line, if you can see that, and property tax, which is the red line, and sales tax, which is the blue line, we see that these revenues have been growing in Lompoc. In fact, when you look at the sales tax revenue quarterly increases over the previous year, Lompoc has exceeded statewide growth for the last six quarters. That's the last year and a half. And we've exceeded Santa Barbara County growth five of the last six quarters. And we've beat the Tri-County areas four of the last six quarters. That green line at the top of the chart that's us. So keep shopping local, Lompoc. It really makes a difference in our community. We look forward to 2018 being a year of progress for our city as we work to embrace the latest in technology to provide you, our community members, with the best and most convenient service possible. Our management services department initiated a financial management system conversion project this year. This is a huge project. The system will make City Hall more efficient and provide best, better customer service. It replaces the city's 30-year-old legacy system. Phase one was implemented in October and included in putting the city's core financials into the system. Phase two will go into effect in July and that implements payroll and human resources processes. And phase three conversion is underway now and this will replace the city's legacy systems such as utility billing. Moving on to public works. The city's beloved South 8th Street Italian stone ponds were a topic of much discussion this past year. In the last few years, several trees have had to be removed because of limbs falling or trees completely uprooting. These dangerous and damaging situations needed to be addressed. The look of the grove and its canopy is changing a bit as the trees are trimmed more upright. We work to maintain the health and the beauty of these trees while also ensuring the safety of residents and property in the area. Funding is a challenge at times for city government and our public works department seeks state and federal grant funding to supplement local funds. Road repair funding from voter approved Senate Bill 1 also known as the gas tax, will provide more than $12 million over the next 10 years to fund road repair projects in Lompoc. In 2017, grant funding helped with two major public works projects, a federal emergency management agency grant of more than $860,000 will be used to stabilize the eroding river bank along Riverside Drive. This will protect the bike and, path and walking path that residents and, view and visitors will be able to enjoy for years to come. We expect construction to start on this project this summer. A Federal Aviation Administration grant of more than $1.3 million was used to rebuild 200,000 square feet of asphalt ramp and taxiway at the Lompoc Airport. The project is now complete and businesses and visitors to Lompoc Airport really appreciate the improvements. A new and very special event is coming to the Lompoc Airport soon. It is the, res the result of a collaboration with Explore Lompoc, 
Vandenberg Air Force Base, NASA, and NASA's Jet Propulsion Labs. For the first time ever, the Lompoc Airport will be hosting a free to the public viewing of a launch. The upcoming InSight Mission to Mars launch on May 5th. We're proud to have aerospace leaders and innovators here in our valley, and we hope you'll wake up early, and I do mean early because the launch is at 4.05 a.m. <laughs> early. So we hope you'll wake up early and join us for this launch. And the Chamber um, asked me to let you know that we are looking for volunteers for the launch viewings in Lompoc. So if you're interested in getting up even earlier and being part of this uh, historic experience, please let Amber or Danielle know. The Public Works Division also worked with Union Pacific Railroad last fall to make long overdue improvements improve the railroad crossings along Laurel Avenue and North H Street. You can really see and feel the difference in these improvements. It's a much smoother ride now. The city opened our new transit transfer center earlier this month and it really looks nice. This moved the hub of bus transportation from the Mission Plaza Shopping Center to Old Town. The new center can accommodate up to seven buses at a time, and the Clean Air Express will now be stopping at the Transit Transfer Center. More than 100,000 commuters a year can now stop in Old Town to grab a cup of coffee or a bite to eat before catching their bus. Or when they come home, they may stop at the Old Town Market on Friday nights this summer before heading home. They might get a little shopping in. Along with opening the new center, the transit, uh, our transit department added seven brand new buses to the fleet. And these buses feature a colorful and patriotic design that pays tribute to our military. They really look nice. Kudos also go out to our City of Lompoc Utility Department. This year, the Electric Division was awarded the prestigious Platinum RP3 Award by the American Public Power Association. RP3 stands for Reliable Public Power Provider. Currently, only 240 of the nation's more than 2,000 public providers hold this designation. Our electric division is truly top tier. The award recognizes them for providing the highest degree of reliable and safe electric service. In order to take advantage of lower interest rates, our Management Services Department recently refinanced our water and wastewater utility bonds, saving those utilities an average of $208,000 a year for the life of the bonds. This will help us defer future rate increases for our customers, a very positive thing. In our Solid Waste Division, we're developing new recycling programs, including food waste recycling in the next year. And we're pleased to announce that the installation of the landfill gas collection and control system project is complete. This system is now operating to prevent air pollution and comply with state regulatory requirements. At the landfill, we're also developing a plan for a stormwater collection and retention system to comply with stormwater regulations. Moving on to public safety, the Lompoc Fire Department were welcomed Chief Gerald Kuras in September. Chief Kuras brings 36 years of fire service to our city. He retired from the Santa Barbara County Fire Department before taking on a new career with us. Chief Kuras is excited to continue moving our fire department forward, also while keeping a focus on maintaining fiscal responsibility. We are fortunate to have his skill and experience in the city of Lompoc. The fire department also continues to support statewide mutual aid response by sending personnel and equipment to assist surrounding communities in need, such as with the recent fires and mudslides. Our city crews responded to mutual aid requests for assistance throughout the county and the state. This resulted in 102 days of deployment in the past year for a total of 2,448 hours assisting areas in need. Joining other communities in their time of need is at the heart of our Lompoc Fire Department's mission. And in the event that we need help, this will be reciprocated. Many of our urban search and rescue team members were deployed during the mudslides in Montecito, and we continue to support the South Coast during critical rain events. 
Community engagement is important to the department, and in 2017, the department conducted more than 120 public education and outreach activities, including CPR classes, fire safety talks and demonstrations, ride-alongs, and station tours. Our building division is part of the fire department. In the last year, there's been considerable turnover in the building official position, and it has been a source of frustration for the development community and difficult on staff as well. Another of Chief Kiris's top priorities is to improve the continuity and customer service in this important development department. A new building official will be joining the city team soon and we look forward to the additional leadership in the division. Our Lumpo Police Department has worked to fill its staffing shortages this past year and they continue to provide outstanding community-oriented policing in spite of these staffing challenges. Fortunately, the department has recently hired 16 new employees. Staffing shortages still remain and are especially noticeable in dispatch, where recruitment and retention are a challenge. One of the department's goals for 2017 was to increase community outreach to at least one event a month, and they well exceeded this goal with over 100 events, including several self-defense courses, including ones for women and teens, a, po a Police Memorial Week food truck festival, an open house that thousands of people attended. This was a very popular event. And they brought back the popular Lompoc uh, police car show with more than 200 vehicles participating. Great community events. The, the department continues to foster the open flow of information with the community using the police department's mobile app. So please use the mobile app to continue to give our department valuable information on what's going on in our community. Moving forward, the department is looking to reinstate the Popular Citizens Academy that allows our community to experience firsthand a taste of the law enforcement profession. This academy would be offered in Spanish as well as English in order to reach as much of our community as possible. Continued engagement with youth programs is also a focus for the department. In addition, our police department plans to dedicate resources to those experiencing homelessness and suffering from mental illness and to better address quality of life issues and assist those in need. The department is closely involved with an upcoming cleanup effort in the riverbed, a place where many of our community members reside. This effort will be done in cooperation with numerous organizations and volunteers. A great deal of advanced planning is going into this to ensure that it balances the civil rights of homeless people with local government control over its own community. The work of Economic and Community Development Department dovetails with the work of public safety to help those in need of housing and more. The Community Development Division helps residents with housing assistance. I'd like to pause now and show you a brief video highlighting community members who have been helped by our programs. She got us set up with the TBRA and with the VASH program and found us an apartment. And Kate Zeiss was the VA. Um, she's the one who navigated and got us the VASH voucher. To and how much was your security deposit? I believe it was $965. Okay. How would you have paid your security deposit if this program hadn't existed? We would have had to wait until Doug turned 62 and got his Social Security, and that would have been in August of this year, and then we would have had to save in order, so it probably would have been a longer, a year process. And because of the situations with your daughter's housing, where would you have been if you, this I, program didn't exist? I we wouldn't be, we'd be in a shelter probably. Okay. What program did you participate in and kind of tell us how you got to the city of Lompoc, not as a city, but our counter to help you? Um, okay, well, um, uh, I was homeless for four months. Um, I went through a living situation where I had to leave immediately from the people I was renting. Um, I was then, I located to the Bridge House for four months and uh, they were very helpful in telling me what programs are available for the city and how to get help to get back on my feet. 
Um, I went out and I got myself two jobs and um, I heard about the rental assistance here and it helps with the deposit and helping sign up for utilities. Um, and so I came here and did the application and everybody was really nice, very helpful, um, very quick. And um, I'm just grateful that I was able to have that chance to get back on my feet and now um, just the thing, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I know it's a grant too, and I know it's only for so long, or yeah. but um, it really helps when uh, you have to, you know, get back up on your feet and get a job and, you know, go back to society. And um, so I was very fortunate to find you guys and to hear about it. And so, yeah, great. I'm very satisfied. Trish was very kind. She was uh, helpful. And and a couple of days after I put in my application, she said, come in and we'll discuss it. So we, I, mean, I came in to her and she approved my application. Um, do you think your landlord uh, in being paid by the city did, has a different view now of the program? Well, when I told them about the program, it's through the uh, rental management company. Okay. And I told them they were very receptive. Okay. Yeah, they said, oh, well, that's great. So we don't have to worry about your deposit. So yeah, no, <laughs> it's available. Great. How much was your deposit? Uh, 1500 and if you don't mind me asking, are you uh, employed or do you receive benefits? And then how how long would you have had to save to get that 1500 Oh, gee, I would have had to save a couple, at least six months to okay. deposit. Yeah. And where were you living for those months when you were looking for a place to rent? I was uh, um, on someone's couch. Uh, okay. A friend of mine, he had a couch, so I, you know, he let me stay there for about three months while I found a place. You know, the city was very, I mean, I'm, so thankful that it was available for us. We are truly, truly grateful for the help from the city of Longboat um, to be able to have a roof over our heads and to start our life again all over. Wow, those are the stories that we want, to, the outcomes we want to see. People getting help and getting back up on their feet there are many other projects happening in the Economic and Community Development Department as well. Renovations at Thompson Park are underway, and that park is home to a new playground surface, a shade canopy over the picnic area, walking paths, fencing, and a new monument sign. Future improvements will include new restrooms, dugouts, bleachers, a scoreboard, and a press box. So far, about $753,000 has been allocated to Thompson Park as part of phase two work. This is paid for through grants, the Housing Related Parks Program and Community Development Block Grant programs. The Parks Division and volunteer hours were also critical to this project. In fact, more than 1,500 volunteer hours went into the project. Thank you to our many volunteers. If you haven't been to the park, please go visit soon to see the improvements underway. Improvements are also coming to John's Manville Park, and the design process is underway for new restrooms and concession stand renovations. In April of last year, the Lompoc Aquatic Center received major renovation work with new plaster in all of our pools, and all the play pool equipment, including the slide, was given a makeover. Speaking of the Recreation Division, the division went live with Active. Active is our new online registration system. And now you can sign up for classes from the convenience of your cell phone. How convenient and modern is that? <laughs> Pretty excited about that. Active also provides information on the use of our rental facilities as well. Speaking of rental facilities, did you know that the Lompoc Aquatic Center is the largest indoor water park on the Central Coast? And it makes a pretty cool place for a birthday party. The Recreation Division recently worked with our Community Relations Manager to launch a campaign promoting these facilities. Here's a sneak peek of our commercial that will be running on KSBY. Looking for a cooler place to swim? Get cool at the awesome Lompoc Aquatic Center, the biggest indoor water park on the Central Coast. Four fun slides, activity pool for kids of all ages, an Olympic competition lap pool for the serious swimmer, and fun stuff to do for the entire family. It's the perfect place for your next birthday party. The Lompoc Aquatic Center on College Avenue in the heart of Lompoc. Open seven days a week. Monthly passes on sale now. 
See you there. Indeed, we hope to see you there. And keep an eye on KSBY for this commercial airing soon. Moving on to the planning division, that division has been hard at work on updating our zoning ordinance, which is now available for public review. In addition to several workshops and meetings, the division also conducted an online survey in April 2017, asking about the types of food service that the community would like to see in the industrial zones, especially the wine ghetto. We received an impressive 671 responses. This response rate not only attests to the importance of food in the industrial areas to our community, but it also indicates that in this day and age, engagement via social media is just as important as community meetings. Thank you to our community for taking the survey. We really appreciate your feedback. Our city is happy to welcome several new businesses to town this past year, including Solvang Brewing Company, Hilton Garden Inn, Starbucks, the Laundry Room, Blenders in the Grass, the Beach, Pizza Hut, Saki Sushi, the new Taco Loco, and 805 Chop House, who did a great job today with the lunch. <laughs> We're also pleased about Community Health Center expanding in Lompoc. The Community Health Center is expected to create upwards of 100 jobs, including construction. Also coming soon are Planet Fitness, Blaze Pizza, and I'm very excited to share that Ulta Beauty has recently submitted plans, and they're going to go in the former Staples location. Yeah, I know. I saw them all right, we're excited. <laughs> that project's going to go to the Planning Commission soon. <laughs> Yep. So we look forward to seeing them at the Planning Commission and welcoming the, them to our business community. And another new project that's coming forward is a mixed-use uh, concept in the former Lompoc Record Building in the heart of Old Town. The first floor of the building is proposed to be commercial use, and on the second and third floors, there'll be seven residential units. We welcome mixed use to Lompoc and hope it brings new life to our Old Town area. We also look forward to new housing projects starting construction, hopefully this December. Some of you homes just north of Purissima Highlands plans to build 44 new homes. We continue to work with developers of several other housing projects as well, including an annexation request for developers along the Bailey Avenue corridor. The department launched the commercial facade rebate and loan program in October, which provides both a rebate and loan opportunities to businesses that are improving the outside of their business or building. This program offers a cash rebate of up to $5,000 and a loan up to $15,000 with no interest. So that's a great way to take advantage of an opportunity to make some improvements. Major changes are underway in the city and the rest of the state due to the legalization of recreational cannabis use. Our, our city council approved an ordinance in December regulating commercial cannabis activities. We are currently accepting applications for those licenses. Our new ordinance allows retail dispensaries, commercial cultivation, manufacturing, distribution, and testing. To further encourage the industry to establish itself in Lompoc, at this time the city council has opted not to prepare tax ballot measures for commercial cannabis use. To date, we have received six commercial cannabis use applications and anticipate receiving more in the future. Because this is such a new industry, and not only for us, but for the state, there are going to be new challenges and opportunities that we work through as we learn how to integrate this new industry into the fabric of our community. We have established a web page on our city's website dedicated to the latest information and resources related to commercial cannabis business in Lompoc. Speaking of websites, our brand new city website will be launched in the months ahead and we look forward to sharing that with you. This website will be an exciting development for our city, bringing us forward in terms of modernization, service, and the best representation of our city. The best representation of our city. A Hallmark Award of Outstanding Leadership in the Lompoc Valley is the Valley of Flowers Peace Prize. 
And this past year, three of our city colleagues were among the nominees for the award. Sabrina Ross, a Lompoc Police Department victim advocate, Council Member Janelle Osborne, and Library Director Sarah Blyle. Library Director Sarah Blyle was honored with the Valley of, Fla of Flowers Peace Prize in January in recognition, yeah, thank you. So congratulations to Sarah and her team for being recognized for increasing community program and participation. We're happy to report that participation in the library's teen programs has increased for, by 44% and children's programs have increased 57% this past year. In fact, the library had increased program attendance for all ages. More than 12,000 people participated in library programs this past year, a 55% increase over the previous year. So thank you for coming out to support our library and its programs. In addition to attending library events, our community plays a crucial role at the library by volunteering. An amazing 27% of all library volunteer hours are done by teens. The library is looking sharp after receiving new carpeting throughout the, Glo the Grossman Gallery and the children's area just received new carpeting a couple weeks ago. We're looking forward to, for plans to renovate the public restrooms this summer at the library. The restrooms were constructed in the 60s, so the renovations will be a welcome improvement. The library continues to promote literacy in innovative and enjoyable new ways. Literacy is so crucial to educational success and growing future leaders right here in Lompoc. A couple of weeks ago, we held our first baby story time. How special is that? How many of these little readers will be our future leaders? You, our community partners, are such an important part of how we serve the Lompoc Valley and collectively how we shape its future. We have been working, we have seen how working together we can accomplish more for the betterment of our community. We are committed to continuing our forward progress, working together as Lompoc does. Thank you to our Lompoc City Council for your guidance and stewardship, the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event, and to our city departments for their contributions to the presentation, and more importantly, for the excellent work that they do every day. And finally, I'd like to thank Samantha Scroggin and Jasmine McGinty for their work and time on this presentation. Thank you all and have a wonderful afternoon. Okay, everybody, um, thanks again to Ms. Teresa Gallivan and Bob Lingle and all the city staff for the presentation today. I also want to thank Chief Walsh for being here. Forgive me, I did not mention you in the beginning, so um, we know you're here. Thank you. I know how busy you are. Um, I'd like to thank the table in the back for the girl shrieks when we heard that Ulta was coming to town, so thank you for that. And a super special thanks to our communications and program director, Danielle Honier, for all of her hard work on this event. She really is the backbone and what makes it all tick. So um, this adjourns our program and hope you have a great afternoon.